Hey everyone! Um, this week I've had a question from Moses that I wanted to uh, put some time to. So Moses asked, how can I build a great team to propel innovation and attract greater clientele? Um, so first off, Moses, whenever I'm doing work with teams and I'm looking at building um, an awesome team and, and really enhancing that experience for my team um, and the people that I work with, I go back to some work uh, by Dan Pink. So he wrote a book called Drive. He's got a really awesome TED Talk. Um, and I'll put the link down at the bottom um, of this page, like underneath the video somewhere, there'll be a link to that TED Talk. And what Dan Pink's work is, um, is he works all in the motivation space. So he's really interested in what motivates people, um, why we do what we do, like how do we build teams, how do we build motivation in individuals. And he has three things. And so whenever I'm doing work with teams, whenever I'm doing work around a high performance culture, uh, performance improvement, career development, all of, um, you know, performance management, all of these um, these areas, I come back to, at, at its core, Dan Pink's three things. And his three things are autonomy, mastery, purpose. And so in the TED Talk, he'll, like, he'll talk in more detail about all of those things. He'll talk about how he came up with those three, um, why it's important, and particularly in knowledge-based jobs. Um, but what he means by those three things are, first off, autonomy is about having a sense of um, your ability to control your own direction. So it's really important. Mastery is the mastering of your craft, being able to do something that you enjoy and that you're really good at and to start to perfect and hone that craft and that skill set. And purpose is around contributing to something that's greater than ourselves. And so for me, whenever I'm asked that question about where do we go for high performance, how do I get more out of my team, I go back to, at its core, asking what I can do in each of those three areas for that particular individual, for that particular team. And so the conversation might go something like this. It might go, which of those three are we doing really well? Which of those three for this person might be lacking? Um, or which of those three might we be inhibiting in the way that we work, the job role, the culture, those sorts of things. Um, and so that's that's kind of my answer to your question is like go back to those three things, autonomy, mastery, purpose, and try and understand how you can build more of autonomy, mastery, and purpose for that individual or for that team as a whole. So um, if I, I try and give you an example. So uh, the, the other piece to this I think that's really, really important is that when you build an environment of customer focus, when you build an environment of understanding what's valuable to your customers, that starts to become your guiding light in terms of understanding your purpose as an organization in the eyes of, the, of your customers. And what that does is it means that everybody in your team can start to align and self-identify with that higher purpose and they can check in around what that means and how it aligns with their own personal purpose. And so you start to provide a, um, an environment where people will self-select into what it is that you're trying to achieve. Then we go to the autonomy piece. Autonomy is about being able to make your own decisions. And so how do you set up an environment that enables your team to make decisions where you as the leader are letting go of that control, but you're setting up an environment where it's okay if they fail. If they fail, they're not going to crash and burn and tank the whole thing. They can, they can fail safely. And then working up to an environment where they're actually making a whole bunch more decisions. So the second video that I'm going to drop um, at the bottom of this uh, this video is a great, great uh, TED talk from a guy named David Marquette. Um, he talks about this concept of enabling autonomy in your team. So he'll give you really practical examples of how to do that from the perspective of somebody who is leading a naval submarine. So this isn't wishy-washy feel-good stuff. This is hardcore, like we do this in the military, give outcomes with minimal um, direction, minimal control. So, um, so that piece around autonomy is really, really important. So you've got purpose, and if we understand value to customers, that can help to guide our purpose as an organization in the eyes of our customers. It can help to guide uh, our team to self-select in and buy into that purpose. Then you've got autonomy, 
And you've got this piece around servant leadership and how do you cultivate an environment where your team can take more and more of those decisions on themselves. Um, and then last but by no means least, you've got mastery of your craft. And so uh, you may have seen a video I did a couple of weeks back around T-shaped skills. It's that concept of as a team member or, or as a team as a whole, we work at both levels, what is it that we're really, really good at? What's our deep skill set? And then how do we get better at scanning the horizon and, and having a broader skill set as well so that when we come into contact with other people, we can connect because we understand a little bit about what they do, but we still have our deep specialization. So you've got value to customers, which drives purpose. You've got servant leadership, which drives autonomy. And you've got T-shaped skills, which drives your mastery of your craft. If you do those three things and you do them really, really well, I have no doubt that you're going to drive a higher performance culture in your team. You're going to drive a willingness and, and more than that, a real passion for doing what's right for your customers, which is going to mean innovation. They're going to have the support network around them that they can make those decisions on their own. They're not having to feed back up to the hierarchy every single time we need a decision made. And so that, again, improves your innovation culture because people can make change happen and they can make it happen fast. And I think if you get really strong on those three things, I believe that you will also attract your dream customers. And so you'll build not only more clients because you'll have this wonderful team that are out there serving your people and doing everything they can for them, but you'll attract towards you the type of people that you want to work with because you've set up that team dynamic and it will start to, it gets this gravity and this mass and it starts to pull like-minded people together. And so you'll get more of not only more clients, but more of the clients that you want to work with as well. So I hope that's been really helpful. Um, drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear how that goes, Moses. And if you've got any questions, anybody, this is, you know, it's out there for anybody. If you've got any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you check out the links that I'm going to put at the bottom of this page too, um, to both Dan Pink and Dave Marquette's work. They're brilliant, brilliant people and they have a lot to share. So I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day um, and we'll see you again next week.